hello and welcome. My name is Lonnie, and I've got a Harry Potter video for you today. Do, 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 do. Let's get started. Favorite book, Order of the Phoenix. I feel like that book was a big turning point in everybody's life, and I just love the writing of it. I loved Fred and George, and even though I absolutely hate Umbridge, because J.K. Rowling wrote such an awful character that it so many emotions came through that I really enjoyed it. Least favorite book? Prisoner of Azkaban. I know, I know. I love the fact that we get to learn about the Marauders, but I feel like that book kind of strays away from the Harry and Voldemort storyline. Um, reading it, like I enjoyed reading it, but looking back and if I had to choose between the seven, that's definitely my least favorite. Favorite movie? That definitely has to be the first one, Philosopher's Stone, just because that's where it all began and I feel like they did such a great, great job staying true to the book. Least favorite movie? Sadly has to be Order of the Phoenix. It's my favorite book and they ruined it. So many things hurt my heart when I watched that movie. Sad tear. Favorite quote comes from The Deathly Hollows, The Prince's Tale, when Snape and Lily are talking and Lily asks Snape, is it real? And Snape replies, it's real for us. Just like how these stories are real for all of us fans. And I love that quote so, so much that I got a tattoo of it. Favorite Weasley has to be a tie between Ron, who's my favorite out of the trio, Fred and George, who I just love them, love them, love them so, so much, and then Molly Weasley, because she is just, she's the best. Favorite female character definitely has to be Luna, because she just beats to her own drum. She just does what is Luna, and that's what I love about her. She doesn't, at least from what we can see. She doesn't care about what anyone else thinks about her and she just goes around doing her own thing. And I just think that is such an amazing thing, especially to put into a book that's aimed at younger people. My favorite male character is probably Neville because he has gone through such, such a big change from the first book to the last book. He's grown so, so much and to go with what I read when I saw this questionnaire online, his greatest fear is Snape, and he has to face Snape every single day. And how how amazing is that? Favorite villain. So I'm going to have to go with Draco on this one, because yes, he's considered a bad guy, but a lot of the stuff that he does is to protect himself and his family. He might be a little selfish in that, but at least he's not going and trying to kill people. He tried to kill Dumbledore, but he he couldn't. He doesn't have it in him to kill. And I think that shows a lot of who he is. Favorite professor definitely has to be Professor McGonagall. She is just a great teacher. She's a great role model. She's one of those people that you never ever want to let down. So the next few are would you rathers. Would you rather wash Snape's hair or listen to Professor Lockhart give a lecture about himself? I'm definitely going to go with washing Snape's hair because that can take like what, like 10 minutes? You don't have to spend that much time with him. Sure, he's probably going to be critiquing you the whole entire time, but it's only like 10, maybe 15 minutes. Would you rather duel an elated Bellatrix or an angry Molly? I would definitely choose Bellatrix over Molly because we see what happens when Molly Weasley gets angry and no one wants to be on the receiving end of that wand. Would you rather travel to Hogwarts on the Hogwarts Express or a flying car. And I think the obvious reason is the Hogwarts Express. That is the main thing that helps you get into the Hogwarts state of mind. Like you get on the train, you're there with all of your friends, you get to see the trolley witch bringing you candy and sweets and stuff to eat. That 
that is the main reason why I want to be on this train. So many sweets. Would you rather kiss Voldemort or give Umbridge a bubble bath? Voldemort, Voldemort, Voldemort. Would you rather ride a hippogriff or ride on a firebolt? I'm going to choose the firebolt because that is something that I've always associated with being a witch or a wizard is you get your own broomstick and you get to ride it and it just would be so amazing and so freeing. Is there a character that you felt differently about in the movies versus the books? And I will have to go with Ginny. She was such a boss witch in all of the books and then in the movies they just made her like a potato. Like she doesn't do much. She's just there as the second love interest of Harry. You don't get to see her grow, you don't get to see how strong she becomes. Like, she is an amazing witch, and we don't get to see that. Is there a movie that you prefer to to the books? No. Richard Harris or Michael Gambon as Dumbledore. I think they both did a great job. Michael Gambon, there are some things that he could have done differently. Like, you know, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Dumbledore said calmly. Yeah, but overall, I like them both. Your top thing, person or event, that wasn't in the movie that you wish had been. Definitely spew for Hermione. That was such a big thing of who she is that I'm really, really sad that that was not in there. That was also basically the thing that finally got her and Ron together. If you could remake any of the Harry Potter movies, which one would it be? Order of the Phoenix. Please, somebody get on that. Which house was your first gut feeling that you would be a part of? So, I don't remember when I was first reading the series which house I thought I belonged in. I mean, probably like most kids, I might have thought I was a Gryffindor because that's just the perspective that we had. But definitely later on in high school and in college, I started feeling more and more like a Hufflepuff. Which house am I actually sorted into on Pottermore? If you couldn't guess, I'm a Hufflepuff! So much puff pride here. I just love being a part of that house and a part of that community. There's so many good things that happen in Hufflepuff. And I mean, we're also next to the kitchen, so you know we get to be friends with the house elves and maybe get some free cookies. I'm always up for some free cookies. Which class would be your favorite? Definitely charms, because that is a class where you get to learn all the practical magic of things that you would use in your everyday life. Sure, transfigurations would also be cool, but I don't see when I'm ever going to have to transform an animal into a goblet. Which spell would be the most useful to learn? I don't think we learned about this series of spells, but definitely any of the cleaning spells. So in Chamber of Secrets, in the movies, when we saw like the self-cleaning pot and like the knitting needles knitting something, yes, that is the type of magic that I think would be the most useful because I mean, maybe you don't realize it, but so much of our time is used cleaning and picking up things. Which character do you think that you would instantly become friends with? And I'm gonna have to go with my boy Newt Scamander, you know, he's not part of the Harry Potter generation, but I think Newt and myself would have gotten along great. We both love animals, I think we both would have the same sense of humor, we're also both Hufflepuffs, so come on. Come on, Newt, let's hang out. I'm also looking forward to the rest of the Fantastic Beasts movies because, I mean, come on, a whole movie series that basically revolves around a Hufflepuff character. That is, ugh, yes, my heart is so happy. If you could own one of the three Hollows, which would it be? Definitely the Invisibility Cloak, because I do not want the responsibility of carrying around the Elder Wand. I don't want to be worried about someone coming to kill me for it. And then the resurrection stone, sure, it can bring people back from the dead, but they're not the same as who they were when you knew them. Is there any aspect of the books that you would want to change? So after I thought long and hard about this, I guess probably less Harry Potter angst in the books. Um, I know that Harry had a lot on his plate during the whole series, but I feel like he just took it out on, like, took it out in unnecessary ways. Whereas, if 
maybe they tried to teach the children some self-care methods, things could have been a little bit smoother for him and his friends. Sure, some of the angst was needed, but not all of it. Favorite Marauder Definitely has to be Professor Lupin. I just love Lupin so much, and he's such a great guy. If you could bring one character back from the dead, who would it be? So a couple months ago on Facebook, I saw this question pop up. I realized that, well, at least for me, only one of them did not have a reason to die. All the rest of them had a reason. Hedwig had to die to show the end of Harry Potter's childhood. Professor Moody had to die to show that, yes, even powerful witches and wizards can be taken down. But so for me, Fred did not need to die. Fred was just this happy character, and all of the Weasleys are just distraught over it. I mean, sure, you can make the argument that Harry saw them as brothers, so then they had to kill one of them off to show that family members die, but in my opinion, that's what Sirius' death was for. Sirius was the father that he never had, and he ended up dying. And the final question is hollows or horcruxes? Definitely hollows because I do not want to have to kill somebody in order to make any horcruxes. So as many of you should know, uh, this past week was the 20th anniversary of the publishing of Philosopher's Stone, and so I thought what better way to remember this week than by doing a Harry Potter video. So I hope you all enjoyed it, and thank you for watching. Please leave a comment or a couple comments down below uh, answering some of these questions yourself, or if you want to discuss some of the answers that I have, feel free. And as you leave my video today, I hope that you leave with peace in your thoughts, peace in your words, and peace in your heart. Bye!